The inquisitive kaka is one of New Zealand's three native parrots. Despite being hammered by predators such as rats, cats and stoats on the mainland, kaka are starting to make a comeback on predator-free offshore islands. Let's go meet one. Tell me a little bit about your mate here, who's this? Uh, this is Brett Bag. Um, he was banded in 91 as an adult, so he's at least 20 years old. We don't normally feed Rat Bag actually because he, uh, they used to feed them back in the 90s, just sugar water and um, they had a lot of kakahi around the house. He unfortunately has became quite friendly with one of the past ranger's daughter and has sort of stuck around ever since, but we actually don't normally feed him. We'll see him all year round. He doesn't normally hang around the house because we don't feed him. Um, but he does have a girlfriend, Annie, who currently has chicks and so we are seeing her occasionally around with him at the moment. Tell me about the kākara on Huturu. Have they always been here? Yeah, they have always um, been on the island but uh, their numbers have been suppressed obviously due to cats and rats having been on the island historically. Why have they done so well? I guess because Little Barrier's um, got such a different range of uh, forest types in it that they can move up and down the island um, due to seasonal food. What do they eat? Uh, they eat a range of things. Uh, we have you know, the putakawas down here on the coast that uh, they'll eat the nectar out of, the pollen, and um, lots of berries uh, further into the bush, ranges cakes, yeah, anything really, they're quite opportunists. They're also known to be quite intelligent. Do you have any examples that you could share with us about them getting up to mischief? Yeah, they've, well, they've pretty much mapped out our whole house <laughs> and know which room and which window they can get into. Uh, very intelligent, they can, um, like their Kia, Kia cousins, they can um, gang up on people that um, just are pretty unsuspecting and grab their food, yeah. There are a lot of kaka here um, on Hotoru. What happens when the, it gets too full? Yeah, obviously an island like this has only got so much capacity and they can't spread out through the um, bush corridors that um, are available on the mainland. But uh, they're very good flyers and can just scoot across to the mainland. We're 25 kilometres offshore, so at night time we can see them coming back uh, from the mainland and yeah, in the mornings we see them going again. So although they roost over here, um, they can feed on the mainland and just fly back. Do you ever get reports of your kaka being over on the mainland? Yep, in nearby Lee we've had, you know, there's usually a flock over there of, you know, a couple of dozen that, um, yeah, rip people's trees to bits. <laughs> <laughs> what can people do to encourage kaka? If they wanted to see kaka in their back gardens, what, what are some ways people could do that? Habitat's the main thing and of course planting trees is um, the best thing that people can do as well as um, making sure that there's no predators around so to get those stoats out of there and rats and stuff they need to be yeah, trapping and and planting trees. So, what yeah. sort of trees would you recommend? Uh, native trees are the best, obviously, the native fruits um, that the kaka love. There is something very endearing about the kaka. Perhaps it's their gentle nature, or maybe it's the way they climb and tumble through the trees. They are known as the clowns of the New Zealand forest. Whatever it is, islands like Hotudu provide a safe zone from which they are starting to spread their wings. <laughs> 